Welcome everybody to another BDA film analysis, a very special edition because we're going to be taking a look at a fight that, not a fight that happened already, or a fight that's going to be coming up, we're going to be taking a look at a mythical matchup. Now normally, I don't like doing mythical matchups because it's a waste of time. You know, who would win between Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali? I don't know. How, how can you tell? But in this case, it's a fight that may still happen. There's very slim chances that it will happen, but a chance nonetheless compared to Mike Tyson, who's retired, and Muhammad Ali, who's been dead for, what, a couple of months now, and who's been retired for decades. So the fight I'm talking about is Golovkin Mayweather. And why am I talking about this fight? Well, because Mayweather recently made some comments about how if he would have trained Daniel Jacobs for the fight against Golovkin, Daniel Jacobs would have won easily. And then he went on to say that he himself, Mayweather, would have whipped uh, Gennady Golovkin. Now, of course, this is classic Mayweather. He's you know, coming out and making these comments because he wants to stay relevant. He likes the spotlight and uh, he likes the attention. So as long as he talks, people are going to listen. And especially if he makes uh, comments such as, oh, I can beat this guy, I can beat that guy very easily, I can whoop him. People are going to listen and his name's still relevant. He's, it's still out there in the media. So that's why he's doing it. But it made me think, hmm, if Mayweather were to come out of retirement right now and he would fight Golovkin, the Golovkin who just struggled to beat Daniel Jacobs in a very close fight, who would win? And, uh, you know, Mayweather, for all his talking and all his bragging, he's still a very good fighter. Uh, last time we saw him against Andrew Berto. Now, of course, Golovkin is not Andrew Berto, but Mayweather still looked very, very good. And there's a couple of things that Golovkin does that are bad. A lot of things that he does well. And Mayweather, for his part, too, a guy who's been who's looked impressive since oof, since he, well since he started his career, but he's also shown a vulnerability, especially against the best opponents he's faced so far. So let's take a look at some of the things that could play a factor here in a mythical matchup between Mayweather and Golovkin. Some of the things each guy does well sometimes, and some of the things that each guy each guy does wrong. Let's start with Gennady Golovkin. First of all, he can be you can make him miss and you can control him and we've seen that now in his fights against Kell Brook and his fight against uh, Daniel Jacobs and Mayweather is one of the best defensive fighters out there still to this day so let's take a look at how a good defensive fighter can circumvent some of the things like an ideal Lovkin does first of all here Kell Brook see how he's changing angles changing directions changing levels see jabbing jabbing rolling with shots Pivoting away, uh, oof, leaning back, pivoting, leaning back again. And here we see the master of that. Sorry that this is, this is going to stutter a little bit every once in a while. But let's, take a look, let's take a look at Mayweather, who is faster than Kilbrook, much faster, and also a better defender. Look at this. And then we see how Daniel Jacobs was able to use his defensive abilities as well to make Golovkin miss, and then look at this, boom, make him pay. And you know that Mayweather, let's take a look at this, when he stands in there, he can let his hands go as well. Doesn't do it very often, but uh, when a guy pressures him a lot, he will let his hands go. And again, here we look at Daniel Jacobs making Golovkin miss. And what happened here is that Golovkin is a master at distance, judging the distance and closing the distance and cornering guys. But what happened against Jacobs was that Jacobs was making him miss. So he forced Golovkin to adapt and to, like he wasn't comfortable anymore in the way he was closing the distance, and that cost him, he, it cost him to, to, to try and close the distance a little faster, which in the end allowed Jacobs to smother him. This is just one instance of Jacobs smothering him. Look at that. When Golovkin would get close, Jacobs would pull in, lean in, and smother him. And who does smothering better than Mayweather? He's a master at, at uh, neutralizing guys with his defense and with all sorts of little tricks like smothering a guy here we're going to look at another example against Maidana look how fast he does it boom do you see that let's look at it again he's moving he's moving he ducks to one side and then immediately puts his hand his left hand behind the other guy's back so Mayweather can stall Mayweather can buy time he can do whatever he can control the fight very well here we're going to take a look at Kelbrook controlling J uh, Golovkin with some hooks Counter hooks and you know pivoting while he's throwing those hooks and who does that better than Mayweather again Mayweather can do a lot of things he's a total package so here you see him check hooking Maidana right you saw him check hooking Maidana you see him moving look at this very hard to fight a guy who's moving 
like Mayweather constantly. This was in the Maidana rematch, and he was moving a lot, and he moved for the duration of for the whole twelve rounds, which isn't easy to do, and it's it's not easy to catch a guy who does that for twelve rounds, and who does it as well as Mayweather. Here we see Kell Brook with that lean back counter catching Golovkin flush. Play that leans back, boom, flush, left hands and right hands to the to the face. And we're gonna take a look at how Mayweather does that. Not only can he do it, he does it better. Look at that. Look how fast he does it. Especially compared to Kelbrook. Ooh. Here we see. Here we saw that. So you saw that? Kelbrook controlling. Using his left hand to control Golovkin. And Mayweather is a master at doing it. Look at that. This is just one example. He'll put that uh, left hand out there, or sometimes it'll be the elbow or the right elbow, whichever elbow he can use to create distance, and he'll white guys with it. Here's Kelbrook jabbing to the body, as you saw, and here is Mayweather, who always does it again, to set up his offense upstairs as well. And those are hard jabs, look at that. See how he's able to, he bent Koto over with that jab. That's a powerful jab right there, and you saw that Golovkin was open to that jab, or for that jab as well. And there you see overhand rights because of the way in which Golovkin positions himself and his hands. He's open for overhand rights. Look at that. And Mayweather, ooh. When he fights a guy who just puts his earmuffs on, he'll whack you with those over right hand rights. Overhand rights. And also Golovkin open for the uppercuts. And once those uppercuts come through, it's overhand rights as well, or straight rights, whatever, you know, you can mix up a punch. Ooh, left uppercuts as well. And then straight right hands, and Mayweather, you know, has a laser-like straight right. Catching Golovkin there. Very, very sophisticated stuff from Kelbrook, who has a little bit of a Mayweather uh, style to him, in the way he throws punches and the way he counters. And of course, Mayweather does it better. I don't know if he hits as hard as, as Kell Brook, but he, I mean, he can still pretty, look at this. He can walk pretty hard with those overhand right now. You see what he's doing like Kell Brook did, mixing it up, overhand rights with left uppercuts, left uppercuts. And that's what I, you know, I mentioned Kell Brook's power. Mayweather has underrated power himself. A very underrated power. Uh, here, look at him. He's breaking Canelo's guard open. With a straight right, and then with an uppercut. If he can break Canelo's guard, he can break Golovkin's. Because it's different type of power here. Uh, well, I'll talk about that a little bit. Oh, that, that's the other thing. People say, well, you know, uh, uh, Golovkin, he... People were saying this prior to the to the Kell Brook fight. Oh, Golovkin lets himself get hit. You know, he doesn't care. I never bought that. And let's, let's you know, Abel Sanchez is explaining that particular thing here. Gennady being the performer, being the entertainer, that he is, he didn't want to finish it. And if you look at some of the rounds, he puts his head out there for Willie to, to throw at him, throw, make it a fight. Never bought that. I never bought that, that oh, Golovkin lets guys hit him. He, The reason why he gets hit so much that way is because of this. He put, The way he stands sometimes, he just tucks his chin down. Yeah, he catches shots on the forehead, so he doesn't care, but he leaves himself open, as you saw, for uppercuts. And uh, when those uppercuts start getting in, people start mixing in the overhand rights, and then maybe more uppercuts. So that whole thing about uh, Golovkin not being, you know, allowing guys to hit him, I don't buy it. And uh, Mayweather hits hard. He might not hit as hard as Daniel Jacobs, but he has that type of power that can pierce guards. And it will remain to be seen if, you know, if Golovkin and Mayweather ever fought to see how Golovkin takes those shots. Maybe he takes those shots like the, the flush ones he took from Kell Brook and he still keeps coming like he did against Kell Brook or maybe he doesn't come forward as much or open up as much like he did against Daniel Jacobs that was a fight in which he he really respected Jacobs' power and uh, it prevented him from throwing as many punches as he, as he wanted to power punches I should say now we're going to take a look at okay we're still watching that uh, still frame I'll we'll take a look at the body shots see here Daniel Jacobs landed like some very good body shots that made Golovkin respect him. Look at that. And that, that opens up an avenue for headshots as well. But uh, you see there, Golovkin hesitating, wanting to get out of the way from the body shots. And now we're going to take a look at uh, Mayweather has some very sneaky sh body shots himself. Look at that. On the inside. He can fight on the inside. He can hurt guys on, on to the body because he's just so fast. He can essentially do pretty much everything. Fight on the inside, fight on the outside. Great mechanics, great technique. So those are the, some of the things that could prove problematic for Golovkin. But now we're going to take a look at 
some of the things that could pr prove problematic for Mayweather. First of all, Mayweather has looked great against almost everybody he's fought, but he has also been in fights that have been close or that really he could have lost. And of course, the classic first Castillo fight, where a lot of people think Castillo should have won. And here we look, sometimes when the guys start putting pressure on him, Mayweather starts to unravel a little bit. If he can't control the fight, if he can't control the pace, he's got a little Hopkins in him, a little Bernard Hopkins. And he starts looking for the ref for, to the ref for help, or he'll start falling across, you know, all over the ring and trying to buy time. And let's take a look at this. See here, he's, I don't know what the hell he's doing there. He looks at the ref like, hey, why didn't you do something? Well, you didn't do anything. Here he's falling. The pressure's getting to him a little bit. Early on against Maidana, he's complaining to the ref about something. Again, complaining, and of course, this moment in the rematch. Lead left hand by Mayweather. <laughs> yeah, but Mayweather, I mean, he'll complain, he'll stagger, he'll stall and try to buy time. When the pressure gets to him, see, a lot of people say, well, Golovkin was exposed against Daniel Jacobs because he finally fought a good guy, a good fighter, a good content fighter, and, and he was exposed. You could say the same thing about Mayweather. You know, when he's fighting guys like uh, Robert Guerrero, who allow him to just pot shot and move out of the way for 12 rounds, or a guy like uh, Victor Ortiz, who isn't the most strong or resilient minded fighter, uh, mind fi yeah, I mean, like a guy with a strong mindset out there, he can do whatever he wants. But when he fights guys like Cotto, Castillo, Maidana, who is a nut job, and he has heavy hands, and then with Robert Garcia in his corner, he added a couple of <clears throat> defensive improvements. You know, they, they, they cause a lot of problems for him and he starts to unravel a little bit. He, he's not as dominant and in a lot of those fights he could have lost. I mean, the Castillo fight and maybe even the first Maidana fight. I thought he won the first Maidana fight as well, but you never know. A lot of people there don't agree with me. So a guy like Golovkin, who puts a lot of pressure and we're going to see here, is not averse to being dirty. Look how he puts his head there, right? And there's a video out there where he's showing Sullivan Barrera how to use that head. So Golovkin knows how to be a dirty fighter too. And with all the pressure he puts and with the heavy hands and the cutting off the ring, I wonder how Mayweather would react. The other thing about Mayweather is those body shots. See his positioning? He's doing the Philly shell defense right there. But it leaves him open to for body shots, whether left hooks or especially here, kidney shots. And look at here we see Golovkin throwing those right hands to the body, which he should have thrown more of against Jacobs, but still, they set up avenues for other shots, upstairs shots, right? And here we see the left hook. He's trading with uh, uh, Cotto, uncharacteristically. And he catches a bunch of hooks. Here we see Castillo bothering him with those left hooks. And here we see Golovkin, who can throw, who throws better hooks to the very few people out there can throw better hooks to the body than Golovkin. Left hooks, oof. With the palm there a little bit, with, not the palm, with the, with the side of the fist. And here we see that eventually Golovkin, he'll get you on the corner. And if you stay there, he's gonna, you see, he, he hits you to the body and then he goes right upstairs, he mixes it up. And here we see early on in the fight against Cotto, Mayweather staying on the ropes, just trying to let Cotto punch himself out a little bit and also looking for counter shot opportunities. But the more you stay in the ropes, it doesn't matter if you're Mayweather, James Stoney, Bernard Hopkins, the more you stay on the ropes, the more liable you are to get hit. And here, eventually, you see, he's staying there a little too long and ooh, gets hit. And he smiles and he says, no, no, you didn't hit me. But that means, yeah, he was hit. He, he, he was a little bit hurt. He didn't like that. And there he's still staying on the ropes, still catches a little shot. Good office for Mayweather, though. I'm telling you, the guy, he's underrated. In, in the power punching department, in the grit department. But here again, mixing it up downstairs for Cotto, and then goes upstairs. Mayweather can't be hit, and this is one of the best opponents he ever fought, Cotto. This wasn't Robert Guerrero in there. And here we see Golovkin putting on that suffocating pressure. Look at that. He'll get hit, but he'll come right back, and he'll put on pressure, pressure. Here, Brooke does a good job of smothering, but still, Golovkin comes right back. With hooks, body shots, oof, right away upstairs. How would Mayweather handle this? And here we see after four rounds, he finally broke Brook down. Mayweather, of course, a better defensive fighter than Kill Brook, but how would he react to some of these body shots? I don't know. See, like he's... Golovkin just not letting him breathe. Like a monster. That's gonna suck. And of course, uh, 
Maidana here, mixing up a couple of shots of the body, uppercut, oof, Mayweather staying on those ropes a little too long, and now he looks at Maidana like, you're not supposed to do that. And that's the problem with, with uh, fighting Golovkin, see, he, in this fight, in the, in the Jacobs fight, it was the toughest fight of his career so far on the scorecards, and he still managed to hurt uh, Jacobs twice, he put him on deck and he hurt him here with a right uppercut. And then right away opened up and lengthened the distance there so he couldn't get smothered. So you just never know. Uh, Golovkin will hurt you. Even in the fights that are close, he will hurt a guy. And here we see perhaps the thing that hurts Mayweather the most or that's the most effective against Mayweather and that stance of his, that Philly shell defense, the jab. The left jab. He can be hit, especially when he fights a guy with a good one. And these are just some of the examples. I'm not showing you all, all of the jabs that Cord landed. And I could also have shown you the De La Hoya fight, where he, De La Hoya also landed a lot of, of jabs himself. And hey, look at this. Let me just rewind that a little bit, because he's fucking froze. Look at all the jabs he's taking from Cordo, and even Maidana. Caveman Maidana was able to land some good jabs in the rematch. And bloodied... Well, this is from the Cordo fight, but see, you take a good jab, and off to the face, eventually, it's gonna bloody you up, and it's gonna wear you down, and, and Mayweather is human, he can't be hit by jabs, and who throws, and Golovkin throws anything but, I mean, he'll throw nothing but, I should say, straight, pinpoint jabs, which also happen to hurt, very powerful jabs, they're like a power punch, look at that, he's not telegraphing it, if he can get guys like Brook with the jab, he can get a guy like, uh, you know, and if Cotto can get a guy, uh, uh, Mayweather with a jab, so can Golovkin, look at that. That jab won him the fight against uh, against Jacobs. And this, mind you, this is just, again, some examples. Just a little taste of what happened in that fight against Jacobs. If you want to see more of those, uh, excuse me, if you want to see more of those jabs, you can look at the film analysis we did for the tri uh, Triple G Daniel Jacobs fight. So that jab will really pose, would really pose problems for Mayweather. Again, here we're going to see a lead left hook from uh, Miguel Cotto. And look at this. Lead left hook from a different angle, which um, Golovkin can throw. He can throw punches from all angles. But look at this. What happened here? Caught him with the left hook, right? Come on. Caught him with the left hook coming in. And Mayweather, oh, is he staggering there? Is he hurt? Kind of looks a little hurt to me. And of course... Did you see that similar style, hooking off the jab? If Shane Mosley can hurt uh, Mayweather, uh, the Marcus Corley can hurt him, I think Golovkin can hurt him. And here's how I showed you the, the pullback counter from Mayweather, how good he does it. But sometimes you can, fire, you can backfire against a guy who just doesn't give a shit. Look at this. At the same time, and Golovkin, if you watch some of the uh, fight analysis, film analysis that we've done, you can see that he'll throw punches regardless of how hard the, the other guy hits. Now, of course, he was a little hesitant against Daniel Jacobs, but he still managed to hurt Jacobs. So if he can hurt a guy, a big guy like Jacobs, I'm pretty sure he can hurt a guy like Mayweather if he hits him right. So that was a BDA mythical film analysis for a fight that might, may or may not happen. I just don't know if it would happen, but it's interesting because Mayweather was talking about it. He's one of the greatest fighters out there, and I would say one of the greatest fighters ever. But, you know, he claims to be the best ever, but he never fought a middleweight. He never fought Sergio Martinez. He never fought uh, Gennady Golovkin. Sugar Ray Robinson fought a middleweight. Hell, he even went up all the way to light heavyweight and fought Joey Maxim there. Sugar Ray Leonard fought Marvin Hagler, and you could talk about how he shouldn't have won the fight or how he dictated all the terms, the size of the ring, the, the length of the rounds, I mean, the length of the fight, you know, the, the weight, whatever. He still fought Marvin Hagler. Roberto Duran went all from lightweight to to welterweight. He fought the best guy there, Sugar Ray Leonard, and then he went to middleweight and won a middleweight title there. So what I'm saying is if you want to call yourself the best ever, you have to take risks. And, of course, Mayweather doesn't have to fight Golovkin. He's done enough. Mayweather has more than enough. But if he wants to be the best ever, you have to do things that you should, that you're not supposed to, that you're not obligated to do, like going up in weight and fighting a monster like Golovkin. And if he didn't want to fight Canelo at 154, he forced him to go down, down to 152. 
I don't think he's ever going to fight Golovkin, especially now. I mean, why? Even though Golovkin looked vulnerable against uh, Jacobs, it's a fight that wouldn't happen, I don't think. But anyway, but still, if it did happen, like, like I showed you here, it would be a competitive fight. Let's not make a mistake about it. It would be a competitive fight. Mayweather can be competitive against anybody out there, any guy from any era. And Golovkin, though, he's such a monster. The suffocating pressure he puts on, the snapping jab of his, which only seems to get better and better, and then that fucking power that he can throw to the body, to the head, knock you down, hurt you, even if he if, if he struggles in the fight. I mean, it's just, it would be a very interesting fight. Fortunately, I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know, it was it's fun to talk about the ifs and buts, especially since Mayweather is the one mentioning Golovkin out there in the media. So, yeah, that was a BDA film analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I try to keep this one as short as possible. Fucking ran 20 minutes. God damn it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Please like uh, the video. Leave some comments. I really want to hear what you guys have to say about this video. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.